you to this marvelous Sunday of lessons and carols, a beautiful Sunday in which we can hear the whole great story once more and hear how music can interpret all of that for us. So we welcome you to this time together here. I hope you will look over your bulletin and take note uh, of the uh, inserts there about the rest of the Advent season. There are many opportunities to be together, to worship together, and to serve together. Uh, I hope you'll take note of the uh, alternative giving catalogs that are available. You can pick one of these up, and that will give you a great way to honor some loved ones while also doing tremendous good in the world. So take a look at that. And uh, along that line, too, I'll just mention that, you know, we are all heartbroken by the news from Kentucky and other, uh, Arkansas and other states uh, where the tornadoes did such devastating damage. And so I would just simply remind you that a marvelous way to offer hope and help in a time of disaster is through our United Methodist Committee on Relief, uh, where 100% of what you give goes to actually do the work of the church in that place to relieve the suffering of families and individuals in that community. So if you have any questions about that, uh, you can certainly let us know. But if you want to give to the church and simply say, please, use this for United Methodist Committee on Relief. We'll see that it gets where it needs to go. And if you have a lot of questions, Jenny Phillips, right over here, the Reverend Jenny Phillips is with United Methodist Committee on Relief, and she'll be glad to answer questions for you as well. I, uh, I hope you find joy and blessing in this time of music and word. We're all busy. Things are crazy. Today, be still for a little bit. Hear the word spoken Find the word in your midst and rejoice in music. I also invite you as we begin to uh, register your attendance either on the pads in the pews or online. You can do it either way, simply so we'll know you are here. And if you are new to us today here at Glen Memorial, we would love to get to know you and help you find a place of connection here in our church, a place where you can connect with other folks. Uh, may God bless this time together here today in the words of the sea. Will you join me in prayer? Dear people of God, in the season of Advent, it is our responsibility and joy to prepare ourselves to hear once more the message of the angels, to go to Bethlehem and see the Son of God lying in a manger, let us hear and heed in Holy Scripture the story of God's loving purpose from the time of our rebellion against God until the glorious redemption brought to us by God's holy child, Jesus. And let us look forward to the yearly remembrance of his birth with hymns and songs of praise. But first, let us pray for the needs of God's whole world, for peace and justice on earth, for the unity and mission of the church for which he died, and especially for God's church in our own country and in this city of Atlanta. And because God particularly loves them, let us remember in God's name the poor and helpless, the cold, the hungry, and the oppressed, the sick and those who mourn, the lonely and unloved, the aged and the little children, as well as all those who do not know and love the Lord Jesus Christ. Finally, let us remember before God his pure and lowly mother and that whole multitude which no one can number, whose hope was in the word made flesh, and with whom in Jesus we are one forevermore. And now to sum up all these petitions, let us pray in the words which Christ himself has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Almighty God bless us with his grace. Christ give us the joys of everlasting life. And to the fellowship of the citizens above, may the King of angels bring us all. Amen. Let us stand.
Please be seated. Joy is the space between your breath and your laughter. Joy is a hand wrapped around yours. Joy is your heart beating in sync with someone else's heart. Joy is that first day of a new season and the intoxicating hope it brings. Joy is dancing in the kitchen and singing in your car. Joy is the first cry of a newborn baby. Joy is contagious. Joy is a song. Joy is the daughter of gratitude. Joy is the heart of praise. And today, we plant our feet in joy. For much of Advent, we assume the position of leaning forward, longing for the moment where God will break into this world once more. However, today we stop leaning to remember with gratitude all that God has already done for us, through us, and around us. Thus, today we light the candle of joy as a thank you for laughter and for hands that hold our own. We light the candle of joy for the change in seasons, for kitchen dance parties, and for newborns. And most importantly, we light the candle of joy as a sign of gratitude for a God who makes water in the desert, heals the sick, and who knows us by name. If joy is the song of praise, then joy is where we should stand. Let us pray. Loving God of all creation, rejoices to be, for it is you among the stars, and you made our beating hearts. Thus, as we anticipate the birth of your Son, fill our hearts not only with hope and peace, which we so desperately need, but also with joy, and when the nights feel too long, and the darkness too strong, you might like the way for us. The peace and joy of Christ be with you. You may be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, the woman who knew, whom you gave to me to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is it that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. 
the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. Here ends the lesson.
Hear this reading from the scribe Baruch. Look towards the east, O Jerusalem, and see the joy that is coming to you from God. Look, your children are coming whom you sent away. They are coming, gathered from east and west, at the word of the Holy One, rejoicing in the glory of God. Take off the garment of your sorrow and affliction, O Jerusalem, and put on forever the beauty of the glory from God. Put on the robe of righteousness that comes from God. Put on your head the diadem of the glory of the everlasting. For God will show your splendor everywhere under heaven. For God will give you evermore the name righteous peace, godly glory. Arise, O Jerusalem, stand upon the height, look towards the east, and see your children gathered from west and east at the word of the Holy One rejoicing that God has remembered them. For they went out from you on foot, led away by their enemies, but God will bring them back to you, carried in glory as on a royal throne. For God has ordered that every high mountain and the everlasting hills be made low, and the valleys filled up to make level ground, so that Israel may walk safely in the glory of God. The woods and every fragrant tree have shaded Israel at God's command. For God will lead Israel with joy in the light of his glory, with the mercy and righteousness that come from him. Here endeth the lesson.
Hear these words from the prophet Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors, when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after their Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another, say to each other, Know the Lord. They shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Here and so. your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served out her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades. But the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up and do not fear, says to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. 
he will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. <laughs> Hear these words from the prophet Isaiah. I'm sorry, it's uh, on the wrong page. Hear these words from the prophet Isaiah. A shoot shall come out from the stock of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. 
the nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the water covers the sea. Here ends the lesson. Hear these words from the prophet Micah. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephratah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me, one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore, he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great, the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. 
Here ends the lesson. Hear these words from the Gospel of Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. Then Mary said, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her.
Please stand. Hear these words from the gospel according to John. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. May God bless the reading of the word. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. In a moment, the ushers will pass among us. Receive our offering for the morning. As we receive this offering, we pray that through this, these gifts, we, Glen Church, will serve God's mission in the world, a vision of hope and peace and joy. Thank you. 
receive this Advent blessing. May Almighty God, by whose providence our Savior Christ came among us in great humility, sanctify you with the light of his blessing and set you free from all sin. May he whose second coming in power and great glory we await make you steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. May you who rejoice in the first advent of our Redeemer at his second advent be rewarded with unending life. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Creator, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Let us sing a joyful noise as we close our time in worship together. <laughs>